The whole point of why they put this in place was to make sure the people did not financially benefit from it. If that doesn't sum up help to buy, I don't know what does. One of the beautiful things about getting into property is people begin to ask you questions. You know, and I'm not just talking about people trying to get into property investment and become deal sourced. I'm talking about your friends and family when they're thinking about buying their own home. What are your thoughts on the market? What are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on that? And the other day I was being asked about help to buy. And someone said to me, look, I know help to buy is like, you know, I think there's, there's two agendas going on, but why is it so bad? So I started doing a little bit of digging into this because I always knew that anything that really comes from the government like this and that is pressed down your neck the way help to buy has been is probably a scam. And I knew a little bit about it and I knew it ended up working out to be quite expensive, but I never actually sat down, read through the stuff and worked out the figures for the government. And having gone through them, I've got to be honest, I am shocked. I am so shocked. I, I knew it was going to be bad, but I didn't realize it was going to be this bad. So what I want to do is just quickly run through some of the numbers and some of the terms and the reasons why I think help to buy is an absolute joke. And I want to cover the new stuff about the 95% mortgages I've just heard been announced. And although we don't really know a huge amount about them, I want to make some predictions. I want to see what, what happens when it actually gets released and when we can see all the T's and C's and all the stuff the government are doing. Let's start off with help to buy. What is help to buy? Well, very simply, let's say you want to buy a house for £200,000 and you haven't got a huge amount of money to put into that house. Normally speaking, right now, you're going to need around about a 15% deposit to get into that house. That means you're going to need £30,000 plus your mortgage broker fees, plus your solicitor fees. There probably won't be any stamp duty because you're buying your own home. Fair enough. Let's say you don't quite have enough money. On a £200,000 house, the government will lend you up to £40,000. That's 20%. And you can put in 5%. The bank can put in the final 75% on a normal mortgage. Now, that all sounds well and good except for the fact that this is going to be an equity loan. That doesn't mean they lend you £40,000, then you pay off a little bit every month and after, you know, five, ten years have cleared it. That's not how it works. It's a bit like a mortgage, but with some added stuff on top that makes it a hell of a lot worse. Let, let me explain. If you buy a house for £200,000 and you've got a £40,000 mortgage on the house, then after ten years, assuming you were just paying interest, there's no capital repayment, that mortgage would still be £40,000. And thanks to inflation and the fact that your house has probably gone up in value, that £40,000 is now worth less to you than it was before. But with an equity loan, if you put £40,000 in a house after 10 years and your house price has doubled, your loan to the government is now £80,000. It has doubled. It increases at the same rate that your house price increases. That means the government are benefiting from your capital appreciation. The whole point of why people want to get on the housing ladder is usually because they save a bit of cash flow compared to renting, and they get on the property ladder. They get the capital appreciation. They get to benefit from the movement in the housing market. You're not going to get to do that. You're only going to get to see a benefit in moving the housing prices on the 5% that you put in. On a normal mortgage, if you put down 15% and you got 85% from the bank, that 85%, which would be 170 grand or 200 grand house, if your house price is now worth 400 grand 10 years later, your mortgage is still 170 grand. Yet with the government, they're going to get all of your capital appreciation pretty much. You only earn it on your little 5% deposit and the bit that the bank put down for the mortgage. It is an absolute joke. Not only that, the interest rates, although, all right, you don't pay interest for the first five years, come year six, you start paying 1.75%. All right, that's not too bad. That's in line with a pretty decent, pretty cheap residential mortgage. But in year seven, i.e. the second year you start paying interest, it jumps to 4.25%. And then year eight? Also 4.25%, year nine, also 4.25%. And I've calculated that using this year's 2020 RPI, which is 1.5%. So basically what happens is once you finish your first year's worth of interest, once you finish year six, it's 1.75%. And then you add in whatever the RPI is, which this year was 1.5. And then you add in another 1%, which means you have a total of 4.25% interest. And that is very, very expensive. You know, for some of the HMOs that we're doing, 4% is not too bad. For some of my overseas investors where they have no other option, hey, 4% is a hell of a lot better than not having a mortgage at all. But if you're buying your own house to live in, 4.25% is crazy. And to be honest, when you work out the cash flow, you're probably fine. It's cheaper to rent than it is to buy with the help to buy because you've got a mortgage for the bank at 75% loan to value, which is probably going to be capital repayment. And you've got the interest payments to the government for your help to buy. You know, I've just worked this out on a standard 200,000 pound house got 40 grand from the government, and let's assume 5% year-on-year growth, you know? So that 40 grand after 10 years is now a 62,000 pound loan. Your repayments, all right, in year six aren't too bad. They're only 75 pound a month. But in year seven, it's 190. In year eight, it's 200. 
In year nine, it's 210, and year 10, it's 220 pound a month. If you work out the total amount of money that the government makes through the capital appreciation and the interest payments and the arrangement fee, the one pound a month, and there's a little bit on top of that for the admin fees they put on as well, they're gonna make 32,885 pounds from your 40,000 pound loan. That's an 8.22% return on investment for the government. Hey, if I was the government, I'd be well happy with 8%. Bear in mind that this is being spread out to millions and millions of people, and there's loads of money going into this. They're putting billions of pounds in the help to buy. They're gonna make 8% on that. Most hedge funds only make 8%. That's an awesome deal for the government. But for you, as someone who's buying your house, you'll be paying 8% on that final 20% deposit that they're giving you. And you're probably gonna pay two or 3% on the residential part, the 75% mortgage, you got two loans going on. It's crazy. I mean, I can go a little bit further and this is, that isn't really the bit that shocked me. I knew it'd be expensive and that is kind of high, but the bit that really shocked me was the way it relates to you moving into property investment. And the reason you're watching this is probably because you're a little bit interested in both, right? Maybe buying your own house and maybe you're interested in investing as well. Well, you cannot, under any circumstances, buy another property when you have a help to buy loan with the government. You need to clear that loan before you can buy another property. And yes, you could remortgage, but you'd need to remortgage and probably put some cash in because again, it's an equity loan. So the value of the loan will have gone up, you know? So you could remortgage and then obviously pay off the, the government that way. And then you could go into it. But there is a clause and it states in black and white, no one is to financially benefit from the help to buy scheme. What if you're not allowed to financially benefit from you? There's only one other option. It's clearly not a benefit. The whole point of why they put this in place was to make sure the people did not financially benefit from it. If that doesn't sum up help to buy, I don't know what does. Taking out help to buy is not going to benefit you financially, period. And to be honest, the only way I can really see this making sense is if you bought a house with help to buy and within five years, then you sold up and you bought a new build, you have to buy a new build, and then after you know five years, the house is probably worth the same amount that it was before. Because when you buy it, and a lot of other people have said this, the house is gonna be slightly overinflated. It's gonna be worth a little bit more than market value, usually 10, maybe 15% in some areas. You'll then see a drop in house price for the next two, three years over a new build. And then maybe it'll come up again with another 10%. So you're roughly gonna be equal. And that 5% that you put in, you're gonna lose on solicitor's fees and mortgage broker fees when you're selling the house. So it doesn't really make sense to go into it for five years. Not only that, if you work out the regular maths on regularly just buying a house you know, and living in it versus renting, if you're gonna move within two years, it'll be more expensive for you to buy than it would be for you to rent, even given the difference in cash flow. And to be honest, you know, I've, I've spoken about this before, I like to rent where I live and then rent out what I own because it actually works out better for me. And that's a different video for a different time, but help to buy, Honestly, I cannot see a single benefit in it whatsoever. You cannot rent the property out. Technically, you can't rent the rooms out that you're gonna be living in, even though you could on a regular regular residential mortgage if you got consent from the lender. You're not gonna get consent from the government to do that because you're not allowed to financially benefit from it. The whole thing's a scam, like seriously. You're not allowed to financially benefit from the, from the, from the help to buy scheme. I don't know what else to say. If that doesn't sum up help to buy, then I don't know what does. Let's move on, 95% mortgages. Now in theory, this is actually really, really good news. You know, people need, do need to get on the, on the housing ladder. And if you do get on the housing ladder, you are more likely to be better off after 10, 20, 30, 40 years or onto the next generation than someone who didn't. I mean, to be honest, you're much better off buying investment properties and renting where you live. But like I say, that's, that's just a different kind of financial view on things and you will work out better for you. But getting people on the housing ladder is a good thing because you will make money because houses do go up over time. However, I do get a little bit concerned whenever the government put out schemes and things to help, you know, push the economy and push up consumer spending and all this sort of stuff. Because if you look at the other side of it, you don't get something for nothing. There's a rule in economics, you know, it's impossible to get something for nothing. In physics, everything has to be balanced. If you do something here, something else has to happen here. In maths, you have an equation, one side here, one side here. Everything has to balance itself out. So if the government are giving you something with one hand, with another hand, they're gonna be taking it. And the likelihood is, what they've said is they are doing government-backed 95% mortgages. Now in the same way, they were doing government-backed bounce-back loans. Now bounce-back loans can be super useful, you know, and I'm really, really glad that they came along. But at the same time, you do have to look at it and think, why have they done this and how does it work? When you take out a bounce-back loan, they give you some money, 
they say, look, we're not going to do any credit checks on you. You know, it's not personally guaranteed or anything, but you do have to pay the money back. But it's government backed. So surely that means, you know, if you don't pay it, the government just pay it. Yeah and no. What it means is the banks will not lose money. If you default on that loan, the government steps in and pays on your behalf. Equally, and it says this in bold writing when you apply for one, the bank are still required by law to chase after you for the money that you owe. So it means you still have to pay it back. The same with the 95% mortgage, it's government backed. It doesn't mean they're giving you free money. What they're trying to do is stop the banks from losing billions because they know that last time this happened, 2008, they had to spend 56 billion pounds bailing out RBS, of which the taxpayer still owns around about 20% of RBS. You know, they had to spend billions and billions and billions bailing out the big banks and paying for this and paying for that. They're trying to avoid that happening because it causes a much larger knock-on effect on the economy. All they're really trying to do is keep the big boys alive and make the people who are paying for everything, you, me, taxpayers, pay more and buy more things. They don't want people to save up for the next month or the next year or whatever's gonna be going on. They want you to spend your money so the economy gets going again, so then people earn a bit more, then you spend a bit more and you end up in this cycle, you know, repeated. They want you to do that, they wanna keep you poor. At the same time, they're gonna back these loans to the banks like, oh yeah, we'll give out loads of stupid mortgages to people who can't afford to pay them at 95%, probably at really high interest rates, we don't know what they are yet, but they're probably gonna be pretty high because the risk is really high. And they're planning on doing it just before pretty much everybody thinks there's gonna be a recession, there's gonna be a drop in the house prices, which means that just about everybody's gonna be negative equity who uses this scheme within a year. They're unlikely to start repossessing your house if you're making your payments, but the minute you don't make your payments, just because it's government backed, don't think the bank is not gonna be coming after your house. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's not gonna work the way, you know, they say it's gonna work. It'll be in the small print and they're not gonna lie to you, obviously, technically all the information will be there, but just because the government are saying, oh, we're gonna back it, we're behind it, doesn't mean they don't think the market's gonna go down. They probably still think that. What they're trying to do is protect the banks because the banks ultimately cost the government way more when they have to bail them out if the banks don't make any money. That's why all the lending that the banks give me at the moment is government backed. It means the banks won't lose money on it and they still make their interest. It means the banks can carry on trading as they would in a growth period throughout a recession. The whole thing is designed to keep the big boys making more money and make sure the people at the bottom don't make any more. That's the what it's for. And although, yes, it's great to get on the housing ladder, I personally would be not be buying my own home right before there's a crash. You know, with an investment property, it's gonna cash flow. I've got a benefit there regardless of house price. But on my residential side, I've got expenses from my mortgage and my maintenance, not cash flow and my house price is gonna drop, that's a double whammy, I'm not into that. I wanna at least make money somewhere. I'm not saying there are no benefits to help to buy, and I'm not saying there are no benefits to the 95% uh, mortgage scheme that's coming out. I'm sure there are gonna be benefits, and I'm sure a lot of people will make a, you know, decent money from it, and it will help them get on the housing ladder, it will solve a lot of problems. But I also guarantee there's gonna be a hell of a lot more people who get stuck in help to buy, who can't get out of it, have a difficulty selling their property because they have to sell it for so much to try and clear all the, all the debt that's on it, and you can't get into property investing. Or well, technically speaking, you can't do anything that's gonna be seen as financially beneficial to you. And the 95% mortgage thing is only designed to keep the banks alive and help make the banks more money throughout a period where there's a restriction in the economy. It's not designed to help you. It's a false thing. It's the, the agenda of the government is to keep the economy going. And to be honest with you, as someone who, you know, is in favor of capitalism and is in favor of people making more money and business being like, doing well and keeping the economy strong, it is a good thing in some respects, but it's a bad thing for the people's trust in the government and it's a bad thing for the people at the bottom who are gonna have to pay for all of this. Yeah, I'd love to see us have a really, really strong government, but right now we're spending billions and billions and billions fighting against coronavirus and fighting against all the other bits that are coming out, and we're kind of getting to the end of it now. And I'd really, really, really be interested to see those countries that didn't spend as much on fighting coronavirus and, and supporting business and all the rest of it, I'd be really keen to see how the two economies line up side by side in a couple of years' time after this is gone, when that huge amount of spending on corona wasn't done in one country and was in the other, how that actually affected the growth of the countries and the economies over the next few years. Because I think you might be surprised to find that some of the people who spent less are actually doing better off in two, three years time. What are your thoughts? I would love to know what you think about Help to Buy, about what the government's doing on coronavirus, about what is going on with these 95% mortgages. What are your predictions? If you like this video, please drop a comment, please like, and of course, please subscribe for more videos next time. See you soon.